Hey guys, it's Domestic Pie. Uh, Alright, so, bringing you another deck. Made made this one. It's called Touch It, Touch It, Touch Me. Uh, yeah. So, oh, let's jump into it. And deck. Doop, doop, doo, 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 doo. Alright, cool. Uh, so, it's got four foul my Fire. I can't talk. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're going to move on with our life. Foul Meyer Knight. It's got four of these. Three of the uh, Knight of the Ebon Legion, three Vampire Dire Moon, uh, four Sedge Scorpions, two of the Black Lance Paragons, four Orzhov Enforcers, two Embodiment of Agony, two Pestilent Spirits, four Leyline Prowlers, one Orach. O Och. Och. Achran? I don't know. Whatever. Assassin. It's got Akron. Ak. Akron. It's a assassin. I don't know. Uh, one Questing Beast, two of the Vraska's Golgari Queen. Uh, two, four, four, Frosca, uh, Swarm Eminence, two, uh, God Eternal Ronus, two Castle Lockwithwains, one Castle Garenbrig, uh, seven Swamps, six Forests, four Overgrown Tombs, and a Temple of Malady. Alright, well, let's jump in. Uh, so the thing about that deck is that that is a whole bunch of Death Touch. So we're gonna, let's see how that goes. Opponent, we are waiting for you. Come wait for me. I just realized that my beer was empty. And you know what? Since I'm recording these back to back. Uh, I feel like, you know, might as well keep the beer thing going. Alright, so, die 5570. Alright, cool. So, anyway, um, two lands. I've got things to do for the first three turns. Let's, uh, let's do that. Cool, cool, coolio. Alright, we'll start with a swamp. Uh, Knight of the Abon Legion. I guess I don't technically have anything to do on turn two, but whatever. Does have something to do on turn three. So I do have things to do for two of the first three turns. And there's an overgrown tomb. So, let's go ahead and just attack and see what my opponent does. Do they, do they fall for my bluff? Or do they just block with a guild of They fall for the bluff. Cool. Alright, anyway, so... Uh, Knight is one of the few cards in the deck that doesn't have Death Touch by itself, but it gains it, so, you know, whatever. It's close enough. It's adjacent to Touch It, Touch It, Touch It, Touch Me. I want to be dirty. Hold me. Kiss me. Fulfill me? Is it hold me, thrill me, fulfill me. I don't remember. I don't know. Oh no, I'm not good at this thing. This this remembering thing, this YouTube thing, this life thing. But I do my best. I try. I try hard. <laughs> That's what she said. So I'm a filthy casual and I I'm a try hard. I'm like, but shouldn't we all try hard? As I'm crying, holding back the tears. It's cool, man. Uh, let's see. Let's go with a Sween. Mm. I can just get Castle. Castle's fine. Do I need anything to double black on? You know, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get my, uh, my Doohickey Doohoodler. I don't know if that Castle's even, like, worthwhile, but it's okay. I, I don't, I shouldn't have attacked with the Knight. There's, there's no, there's no trick here. Like, yeah. There was no, I should have played the Leyline Prowler after combat. Guys, Sometimes you should be playing after combat, and that's not every time, but the general rule of thumb, and this is, you know, how I know when my brain's not working properly and I'm playing poorly and whatever else. The general rule of thumb is that if it does not impact combat in a way that you want it to impact combat before combat, you shouldn't play anything in your first main phase. That's a that's a luxury that you have. You can play things in that main phase if you think they're going to impact uh, combat. If you don't think they're going to impact combat, don't do it. Okay, cool. That was a good talk. I like that talk. All right, so now we're going to play this before combat because it has a very sp 
special bit of text here. Whatever creature you control deals damage to a player or planeswalker, put a plus one, plus one counter on that boy. Mm, boy. All right, cool. So we're going to go ahead and, well, not that. Hit escape so that doesn't happen. We're just going to go ahead and attack this planeswalker. We're going to hit him off the board. Yeah, boy. Yeah, I don't know if this uh, Castle Garenberg is good. I mean, the upside is that it's like a, it's like a bad forest, right? Uh, it has the potential to not come into play untapped, as we saw at the beginning of this game. The, the big upside is that it can cast like seven mana stuff. I think I might cut it from the deck. I'm going to leave it in because I started the video this way, but I think moving forward, we're going to cut it from the deck. Now, this is a deck that... For the most part, and I, I made some changes um, before I started this video, I grabbed a, a deck that I ran in the Standard 2020 event. So this is just basically a deck that I, I ran in the Standard 2020 event and then updated with uh, a search of, like, Death Touch. I was like, hey, what's got Death Touch in it? And I upgraded the, um, there's a 1-1 one, one Knight. I think it's a Knight? I don't know. It's a 1-1 one, one that just has Death Touch. It's just 1-1 one, one Death Touch. I upgraded it to this, uh, to this Knight because uh, that's it's better. It's better all around. All right, cool. Um, cool story. All right, so what's my opponent going to do? I was going to play this Frasca to, um, to kill the Oko. Uh, or a creature. And I haven't decided. I probably, because, it, it, like I said, that rule of uh, play it before combat, I should, theoretically just kill like the goose or something um because then it gives him less options for combat tricks it gives him only one mana instead of two mana right or does this yeah this has something sickness. um i don't like that black like i don't like this for summoning sickness i think it should just be like a little zombie that's like throwing up or something like up here in the top right but whatever we're just gonna you know do our thing all right so i'm just gonna go ahead and attack like this Block if you want to lose some creatures. Eh, you know, whatever. Now that is the upside of this deck, is that it is very, um, very difficult to, uh, to block all the time. It, it sometimes, um, sometimes doesn't, it doesn't really want to do that. Uh, also, these little guys, just killing planeswalkers, that's pretty solid. That is not a bad little trick. And my opponent doesn't want to deal with my touch a touch a touch marmy. Touch a marmy? Touch a army? Touch a touch a touch army? I don't know. There's a pun there. You know, whatever. Touch a 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 touch. All right. Wilderness Reclamation. I've probably like gotten 20 or 30 of those. So, you know, goes into my vault. Ugh. The vault. You know what would be cooler than uh, when duplicates come up like that? Than uh, them going into your vault? It's if they just gave you a wild card. <laughs> like, just give me the wild card, bro. Um, but it's fine. It's fine. Alright, well, there's no green uh, There's no green sources in this hand. Other than that, this would be a beautiful hand. If there was one green source, I would be very happy with it. But we're not, uh, not going to keep that one. Alright, well, this one has a green source. We're going to do that. I'm going to throw away the Embody of Agonies. Um, just because it's such a later game card. Uh, yeah. I don't think I have any shuffle effects in the deck. That is, like, one of the weirdest things to adapt to standard. Is the lack of, like, shuffling my deck a lot. I, uh, obviously played standard uh, as a starting... Well, I don't know if it's obvious, but... I played standard as my, you know first format but back then we called it type two um oh i gotta wait in eh, i'm dumb i guess i guess he gets lifelink that's gonna gain me a life okay it's i guess it's worthwhile whatever oh uh what i was talking about with that rule earlier by the way uh about casting things before combat if they matter to combat sometimes you don't even have to worry about it like it just doesn't matter it like if it if it doesn't make any difference before or after combat it doesn't make any difference you know what i'm saying like 
if it's not gonna make any difference before or after combat then don't worry about it you know don't don't stress yourself bro uh, I guess I could have gone with a not uh, tap into land so that I could threaten with this one but I figured if he if he does decide to block the uh, black lance then at least I get a damage through and if he doesn't decide to block it like if you know whatever um, then you know maybe I don't get this damage through like that was the thought um, but he just decided that he wasn't going to block either of them, so we're just going to get all the damage through, and also I get to put the thing on the thing. Alright, cool. Alright, so anyway, so he's got a midnight clock. I'm not super worried about that, but what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this, uh, this steel overseer. We're not going to be, actually, yeah, I'm just going to get rid of the steel overseer. We're just going to move on with our lives. Uh, I'm going to get in for five. We're going to, you know, if you want to attack my Vraska, I'm not going to protect it. I've got, you know, six power on the board. But I don't want you putting, uh, is it plus one, plus one counters? or Yeah, plus one, plus one counters. Nah, bro. We're not doing that. In your pseudo affinity. Okay, well, I guess you're doing that. Coming in with a ginger brute? Coming in with two ginger brutes? Drop me to 19 and get rid of my Vraska? Or are you going to be on blocky locky duty? Yeah, I guess this also doesn't have Death Touch. I just added it without really reading it. I was like, oh, it's got Death Touch. It, it does not have Death Touch. Um, this may get cut from the deck. But it, is, it does have Flash. So that's you know, at least interesting. All right, so we got a Sedge Scorpion on the board. Uh, I shouldn't have played that before combat. I'm just playing so lazy. So lazy. Brohan, block with your Clockwork Servant. You gotta. You gotta go to four, I guess. Whatever. Cool, cool, cool. I'll have a four or five. I'm, I'm pretty okay with that. I guess I should have played land, but like, I don't know. I want to bluff like I've got something going on. I don't got nothing going on. Other than a fucking taste for your death. Taste it. This blue artifact deck or blue artifact deck <laughs> well I don't know if you're ever going to cast that thing but you can't make your stuff bigger so that's cool doop 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 doo. alright well lose two creatures I guess or maybe just one opponent thinking about it going to three they can make what four mana five six six mana oh if they've got a land they could they could make this a little more dead all right cool that's gonna suck here comes an island three two one drop an island oh did they not get an island that's some suck sandwich it's like success, but you know, with more manwich in it. Steel Overseer? What am I playing? Modern Affinity? Clockwork Tower? I mean, Midnight Clock Tower? I mean, do your thing, man. If you draw an island, I'm going to be upslet. I got him to three, which isn't terrible, but it's not good. It just doesn't have that reach, you know, that last punch. That's what I need, but, you know, whatever. I got a couple lands in hand. Could have been could have been something a little bit more tasty. I probably could have played it differently. Probably could have, you know, done a thing right. Oh, well. Oh, well, oh, well. All right, well, let's uh, go ahead and draw a card here. Boop, boop. I don't like that I have to, like, go all the way up here to do it. I should be able to, like, the the option should all just be down here in this lower corner if I'm going to be down here. Oh, well. I complain a lot. That's that's kind of my deal. I just feel like a lot of this UI is just garbage. And by garbage, I mean, look at this stupid fox. If I were, if I had edited my stuff. Okay, so he's only doing four damage over here. That's fine.
Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll just kill it. I mean... I wasn't doing shit else. I, I gotta just draw another card, but whatever. Expensive cycling. Oh, there it is! Bam, bam! Hits the Knight of the Ebon Legion! Well, that knight got a lot of work done, though. Killed a, killed a few creatures, did... I don't know, 8, 12, 16 damage. And Knight had uh, a hell of a run. But now I'm going to get beat down by animated artifacts. Oh man, this would have been so good earlier. So good earlier. Alright, whatever. gonna do it like this if I have anything to buff a knight I don't think I have anything in the deck that just gives him a plus one but I can get in for some damage if they don't kill uh, if they don't kill my stuff and they don't kill me I don't think it can kill me but we're gonna find out I mean what are they gonna do it turns it into a power and toughness right uh, equal to its CMC so three threes plus however many counters are on it this one's gonna get this one's gonna go away. So that's cool. So maybe they'll fuck it up. Ooh. Maybe that's what I'll build next. Maybe that'll be the series as I just look at a card that's in a, in another deck that I build. Um, I noticed that this one also got the, uh, this deck got, uh, Brain Fart. Can't remember the name of it. 4-4 four, four with, uh, a paragraph on it. Um, Questing Beast. This deck got updated to Questing Beast. I was thinking, oh yeah, I want to do my Death Touch thing. And then it got updated to the Questing Beast. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Alright, so he did play around the, uh, the Akran Assassin by, uh, you know, leaving up the thing. Um, well, that's cool, too. I mean, like, I'm just going to play this before combat. And then not go to combat. I mean, I, I guess I'll just attack for one, because then if he if he does block the uh, the meteor golem, will uh, will die. But he's about to draw uh, seven cards. Oh, it doesn't get sacrificed, it gets exiled. Even worse. I thought it went back into the library. Bop, 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 bop. I forgot. Because I'm a dummy. A big, dumb dummy. But, on the upside, my opponent cannot block my Pestilent Spirit. And they must kill the Ock. Akran Assassin. And if they don't kill the Akran Assassin, then they die. So that's cool. Because Pestilent Spirit is exactly lethal. Exactly lethal. Alright, so they've got, what, four... One, two, three, four, five... Oh! <laughs> what? Uh, for some reason, I thought they were animated the magic mirror. Okay, that's... Wow, my brain is loopy doopy doopy doo Man, that would have sucked. Animated the magic mirror hit me for nine? Woo! That would have put me right out of the game. Stay a while. Listen. Touch, 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 touch me. Stay a while. Listen. <laughs> Style, 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 wow. I don't know, man. Losing it. So anyway, teeny, tiny, kitten. Meow, meow. All right, my teeny, tiny kitten. Let's rock. Let's put this in the mitten. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what I'm 
say it anymore. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Okay, so I think I'm turn one, I drop the overgrown tomb, untap, turn two, forest, leave it, just leaving it. Maybe Black Lance Duty Doodler. Because then I could Black Lance the Knight. Like, in response to combat damage, blah, get him. If he doesn't play anything, then I, you know, do the doodly doodly do. But let's find out. Maybe they're, maybe they're not playing a kitten deck. I'm going to be upset if they're not just playing, like, mm -hmm. I'm upset. I was going to say, I'm going to be upset if they're not playing that kitten. But they're playing blue. Blue doesn't have kittens in it. Doesn't have a teeny tiny flame cat. Flame cat. Damn. So what I'm thinking now is what is my opponent doing with their bright red sleeves and their blue land? Are they trying to trick me? Or are they trying to show off that they, that they got mastery last season? Look at this. Flame on! Flame on! Most of their animations are pretty on point. This one is, uh... This, one, this one's just... Hey, guys, we need to make that uh, that skin animated. Or that sleeve animated. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Give me uh, ten minutes. Okay, got it. Ha! Got him! Bum, bum, bottom. Bum, bum, bottom. Boom, boom. Bum, bum, bottom. Bum, boom. Are you going to block it? That's what I thought. You ain't blocking snipes. Anyway. Now I have an Orzhov Enforcer on the board. And my Orzhov Enforcer has Death Touch. Oh, isn't that nice? Improbable Alliance. Whenever they draw their second card for the turn, they make a 1-1. One -one. Well, that's not nice. And they can pay six mana to loot. Looty booty goody loots. All right, well, whatever. Let's uh, attack my opponent. I should have paid this overclone to him. Plum, 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 plum. Well, if you're going to die, you might as well get lifelink. Brah. That way, you can pay for some of my overgrown tome. And my Vampire of the Dire Moon, which rhymes. For some reason. I don't know why that, that mattered that it rhymed, but, you know, it did. I've got a Blacklands Paragoon. <laughs> Paragoon. He's a goon now, I tell you what. Uh, Tomb set? That actually says Paragon? Oh, you're going to be making, like, moldable, mold, mold, moldable guys. Whatever, man. Kill it. Blah, blah. Get it in your face, too. Uh, I've got a one and a two. Whatever. I'll just make a two-two flying death touch. It's not good, but, like, it's a two-two flying death touch. It's, it's not bad. I don't know that I'd normally pay three mana for it, but you know what? My whole team's got Death Touch right now. Now if I get a land, I can Swarm Element, and I can do the thing, and since I didn't get a land, I'm just going to have to, like, crash in. So this Improbable Alliance is going to get uh, on my nerves. Exactly what it's going to do. But this Embodiment of Agonies, the nice thing about that is that uh, this Crackling Drake at least can't get too annoying. As this crackling get, drink gets too annoying, but if it if it gets too big and they don't kill the embody me embodiment embody me, burping, oh, I'm so ladylike. W the fox. All right, well, a second cracking Jake is not good for me. Uh, I would like another land though. How many of they? They're four, they're four cards ahead of me, which is, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it's, uh, it's starting to get to be a lot. Okay, well, you can't, you can't get Death Touch. But everybody else can have Death Touch, so they're going to double block, yeah, double block in front of the embodiment. And then, yeah, we're going to order those blockers that way. 
sometimes it doesn't doesn't matter the way that you order your blockers, and maybe the game should know that, but if you don't know that, whatever. It is what it is. But the enforcer's bigger now. So that's neat. My guess is they come over and kill Vraska. So that's what I would do. I would send her to Jesus. For being so Jesus. Touch, 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 touch me. What? You didn't send her to Jesus. Should have sent Orzhov Enforcer up to, up to not Jesus if you wanted, you know, to do the thing. All right. Well, is this a counter spell? I haven't seen one. I'm gonna say no. Ain't no counter spell. You ain't no counter speller. And then he drops a counter spell. <laughs> All right. Whatever. Now, look at that. Wham! Bam! Thank you, mother. Make two three one ones. All right, three one ones coming out. One of them jumps in front of the two one. One of them jumps in front of the Ebon Legion. The other one jumps in front of the Ebon Legion. This is totally fine. I've got a five five with Death Touch, and I just did four damage to him. And next turn I'll make a uh, Vraska and start making one ones again. But I might die before that uh, the next turn happens. Oh fuck me! Right up the what? Okay, well. well. That was neat. What wasn't that neat, guys? I thought so too. But here's the upside. Did some damage to him. All right. Now we're going to say Guten Tagen. Oh, the game. So that happened. <sighs> yeah. Okay, well, you know, maybe I'm bad at magic. It's fine. I never even played any of that play any deck standard thing. I should have done that. Should have done my homework. Because that event's going to start in like 12 hours or whenever. And I don't know what I'm going to play. But, you know what, my hopes aren't to uh, to get one of every card in standard. I'm not that good at magic. Uh, and if you're watching this far in the future, this was a, an event that they tried to get a lot of players to, to play the game. Um, because if you have every card, then you have that availability. But, I think it's a bad strategy from a long-term investment. Uh, strategies, point of view thingy, I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say. I'm kind of retarded. It's okay. I can say that because I was in special ed. Uh, and also because I'm from the 80s and probably nobody will watch this. But you know what? Feel free to get offended. I, I don't care. If a word offends you, then you're probably not meant to be on YouTube. I mean, the internet in general, but, you know, whatever. Alright, well, we're getting rid of the Leyline Plow... Plowler? Plowler? Plow... Why is that not... Drop off my mouse there. Okay, thank you. Um, anyway, so what was I saying? Uh, before I started pissing people off. Uh, nothing, because that's all I do, is I seem to piss everybody off. Um, yeah, I don't know. The uh, That event, I think, is, is bad in terms of long-term planning. And I think that that's par for the course. There's things just... <laughs> aren't good for long-term planning um in general God, why can't i talk that's not what i meant to say what i'm trying to say is that sti seems to be a driving factor in things being bad long term um and by things what i mean there is a different word because if you say things and you're not professional apparently uh this is not going well but I less than three, you guys, for sure. Thank you for putting up with my bullshit. 
just gonna drop a, a death death touchy knight and a not death touchy knight on the board. Move on. Um, actually, I like the black lance. I've decided I've come around on it. I like it because it works really well with the other knight. And they seem to come together. Um, so anyway, so my uh, my stupid business advice. <clears throat> is just that short-term incentives seem to give people this idea that they should only be building a business for the next three months. I should only worry about what what am I going to drive for the next three months because who cares after that? All right, what, what happens uh, in the next three after this one? Uh, gonna go ahead and Black Lance Paragon. Yeah, get him. Oh, Death Touch all around. <laughs> it's Death Touch Christmas. Um, <laughs> anyway, so what I'm saying is that if I'm in a job that has a short-term incentive, I am going to do what I can to get that short-term incentive for as many months as I think I can, can drive that. So... For instance, if I'm a low-level employee, um, let's say I sell uh, cell phones or whatever. If my plan is to get a decent bonus for the next, you know, for this month, I don't care what I tell my customers, right? Now, I personally don't agree with this, but I'm saying that I don't have an incentive to tell my customers the right thing. I don't have an incentive to be a decent human being. I can just lie. And the only repercussions are going to be the moral ones that I feel. They're not going to be, um, they're not going to be financial ones. Well, that's all I'm good, but we're going to go ahead and just attack in. Okay. Um, so we're just going to drop morality from the, from the thing because, you know, yes, there are good people, but there are also some pretty trash people and also... Fuck, Ugin. Just Ugin showing up just out of nowhere. I am not a fan uh, of this card, just in card design. Um, It's colorless and doesn't really care where it goes. So it just ends up in everything. Nah, whatever. I'm, I'm bitching about too many things. Guys, let's, uh, we've gone off the rails. We've just gone off the rails. That's all. That's all that's happened here. Dooms has gone off the rails again. Um. Yeah. That was a rough play. Should have definitely played the Lady Lion Prowler after the fact. I could have attacked the knight, but at least I got to go off the board. Um. God, what was I talking about other than, you know, uh, how capitalism is bad? Uh, let's see. So, if I do if I do a thing uh, where I incentivize bad behavior or I don't incentivize good behavior or I, I don't know, whatever, man. You get it. The example's easy. If I'm a low-level employee and I'm... I'm incentivized by, uh, you know, selling a lot of extra phones. I might say the wrong things. If I'm a vice president at a uh, major corporation, I might be incentivized to make sure that we do extra sales this quarter by, you know, whatever strategy, um, cutting the prices or, you know, whatever else. Uh, especially if I understand that the, you know, uh, accounts receivables, um, on the other end, the accounts payables, sorry, <laughs> fuck, um, if I understand that my accounts payables aren't, aren't going to come up until after my bonus shows up, um, and it's not going to, it's not going to figure in properly, you know, I can probably push that can down the, the road with my foot, but we call it a kick, I kick that can down the road for a little while before it becomes, uh, you know, a thing that I get fired over. Well, woot woot. Alright guys, I don't know how many games that was, but I'm gonna cut it there, because 
I went way off the rails. It's touch, touch, touch me. I want to get dirty. Uh, my thoughts about this deck. If if Arena will stop uh, dropping this frame rates down to three. I don't understand why a card game needs all these goddamn animations. <sighs> so bloated. Anyway, so this deck overall. Um, like I said, I'm not... I'm not sure that Black Lance uh, belongs in this deck, but just a little bit of emotion seeped in, and I don't hate it. It's got Flash, so you can play it during your opponent's turn if they're uh, if they're if you're locking you down or whatever. I don't know, whatever. Um, but the rest of it feels pretty good. There was a I don't remember what the Death Touch card that I got rid of was. Um, oh, Hired po Poisoner. I got I got rid of those for the uh, Foul Mouth Foul Mouth Knights. <laughs> foul mouth. Um, I got rid of the poisoner for for these guys because uh, they're functionally the same as far as they're a one one death touch. Uh, but this one is slightly better because if you draw it in the late game, you can pay three mana first, draw a card, and then play it. Um, so I don't know if that's worthwhile. I just know that you know it's better than the hired poisoner. Um, just because it has an extra ability. Hell, even if even if it said uh, pay blue mana to lick your own butt, it, it, it's still better because it's got a it's got an ability on it, um, and there's nothing that, that interferes with licking your own butt. Even though this deck doesn't have any blue mana in it, you never know. You never know. You could you can get some weird situations where you need to pay a blue mana and lick your own butt. Uh, let's see, Knight of the uh, Avon Legion. I'd probably run four of, but I only have three, so. I, I just ran it this way, you know? I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. I, I do have some wild cards. Not a lot, but I got some wild cards, alright? Uh, I do have a lot of uncommon wild cards. That seems like a lot. Um, Sedge Scorpion. Uh, this one has a special place in my heart. I played a Theros uh, Arena League. It was a sealed league. We started with, like, I don't, I don't remember how many packs, six packs or eight packs or some shit. Um, and then each each week, you got to add another pack. And I had, I think by the end of it, like, eight, eight Sedge Scorpions in my in my sealed pool or seven, seven or eight, maybe, maybe nine. I don't remember. Somewhere between seven and nine. I had, like, 65. I had 65 Sedge Scorpions in my, uh, in my sealed pool. It was ridiculous. So, anyway, Sedge Scorpion will always hold a special place in my heart because of uh, because of that league and being able to dominate my local gaming store with uh, with a ridiculous number of Sedge Scorpions. Um, it was like, it felt like every opening hand had a Sedge Scorpion or, you know, uh, if I were on the... Uh, if I were on the draw, I would I would have one. Um, it, it just felt so much, and I know some of that's confirmation bias, but we're not gonna worry about it. Uh, but it felt like it was Sedge Scorpion all the time. I also had uh, two Fleece Main Lions, I think, one or two Fleece Main Lions. I remember a Fleece Main Lion came up, and I think it was two of them. Ridiculous draws, ridiculous draws. Um, also, I was opening all of my packs in front of people. Um, these weren't, like, sorted packs or anything. I didn't get to go buy my own packs. I bought them at the... I, not bought them, but I acquired them. They were handed to you at the uh, local game store. So a lot of a lot of variants in that sealed pool, obviously, uh, environment. Or sealed um, sealed arena, if you're getting to add a pack every, every week. I don't remember. Did I buy them? I figured if you pay for it all up front and they just add the pack or if you have to if you have to decide to buy the pack each week i don't remember whatever it doesn't matter point is sealed arena is a stupid stupid idea uh sealed in general is um it's so variance based it has it has less skill than the draft but you know at me over it oh uh, let's see what, what else was i talking about i'm just rambling here whatever fuck it uh, I didn't get to see Questing Beast come out at all. It's only one of in these 60 cards. And I, I think I only played, was it three games? Four games? I don't know, whatever. Uh, Questing Beast, really good card. Um, I only have one of right now. So I couldn't I couldn't go up anymore. But I've, I've only got one of them. Um, yeah, I think the Castle of Gar Garenbrig is not good enough in this deck. I was thinking, like, what happens later if I have, like... I said like a couple of said scorpions and a 
uh, questing beast on like turn four or something, um, or turn five rather, and like, but that's not gonna happen. It just doesn't seem realistic. Uh, I guess it's an easier way to cast uh, God Eternal Gronus if you forget that it you know uh, adds six mana and you have to spend five to do it and Gronus costs five. So there's there's like it just doesn't feel like there's any good reason to have this in the deck. But you know what? I felt like a green deck you gotta have it. All right, well that's the end of the video. If you guys have any comments for me, I wonder where you would put them. I don't know. Tell me in the comments below.